good game, good opener. West Oregon is uh, they're gonna be okay. They're a good team, well coached. Um, you know, in the first half, I thought offensively that uh, Heath probably struggled throwing the ball a little bit. I could tell he was a little bit nervous at the start. But after the first quarter, he settled in and started throwing the ball a lot better. Um, and, uh, you know, he, uh, he really got in a groove, I think, the second quarter that uh, helped us at times. Um, and then uh, pretty impressed with Norman Schuford. You could tell he would played some football games before. Uh, even though sometimes he wasn't getting a ton of help, he... Um, you know, he, he ran well. Um, and I thought Hershey, that was kind of Hershey's first big action, too. He played a little bit last year, but that was meaningful reps. Uh, wasn't running too bad, and he kind of had that fumble um, down in the goal line, which hurt. So I'm sure offensively we'll go back and look at the tape. The first thing that's going to pop out is our two missed opportunities when we had the ball inside the 20, and we could have came away with scores. We had the Hershey-Jackson fumble, and then uh, Charles Johnson pushes off on the offensive pass interference. And, uh, you know, those are two things. Those are... Two mistakes that were not caused by Western Oregon. Those were self-inflicted mistakes, and uh, when you're on offense, you can't have those self-inflicted mistakes. You got to have you know clean play. So, um, you know, and then there was a couple times in the second half when we probably needed on defense to get a break that we had a couple three and outs, and we've got to get a couple first downs there and allow our defense price down the bench. Um, defensively, and uh, you know, the first half, if you're out there, you saw our defensive line had a lot of penetration and created a lot of problems. I think at halftime they had 87 total yards of offense. We had, uh, I don't know, again, it seemed like we had quite a few tackles for loss and we were really pressuring the quarterback at times. Uh, we talk a lot about defense, sudden change. We have to go out there when things aren't great. And, uh, you know, a couple times on sudden changes we got stops and or held them to field goal attempts. And we tell our defense all the time, field goals, won't, field goals don't get you beat. Touchdowns get you beat. Field goals don't get you beat. So the fact that we had a couple stops and uh, got a couple field goal attempts and he missed one, uh, I thought was key for our defense. So, um, you know, special teams, there's good and bad. We had a... Something we saw on tape um, with their punt team, and I think between uh, our coaches and then also our players execute it, uh, we got the block punt for the touchdown, which is huge. Could have had another one that kind of got delayed game. I think we may have got two if I hadn't got the delayed game there. But our punt return team obviously helped us win that football game. Uh, kickoff return, there were some uh, good ones. Mike Rattay ripped a couple. Um, our kickoff was not good. we got to get better at our kickoff team. It's way too, big, too, way too good a field position for some of the athletes that we have out there. So we can get back on tape and coach those guys up about how they're getting down there. Uh, and then, you know, every time extra point field goal takes, us, takes the field, we want points. And I thought for the most part, um, Greg Gay had, had pulled a hamstring earlier this week, so we didn't have Greg's services as a holder. So some credit goes to Isaiah Grimes, who's been doing some backup holding. He jumped in, did a good job holding. Stokes made all the extra points. And uh, Lucas Kozu, really, when you look at the uh, extra points and also the punt team, like, he was snapping really well. And Picano had some good punts. And... Um, a couple times their returners were too shallow and they were having to retreat back to catch those punts and I think that is what caused them a little bit on, on a couple of those fumbles to cause fumbles because they didn't get it and rip it. They were moving a little bit east to west, got some more pursuit down there. So, um, you know, the turnovers, our ability to capitalize on some special teams turnovers, three of them, I think was probably what got the thing to the point we were and I was glad we were able to get um, some of our guys, especially our offensive linemen, off the field in the fourth quarter. We want to make sure we get, uh, you know, those guys, it was much more humid and hot than we'd had in camp, and I was glad we got some of those guys off the field heading into the fourth quarter. Well, you know, you, obviously you're going you're gonna to see some negative things out there <laughs> in the field too, but, you know, 23 to nothing halftime lead has got to be a feel a lot better, especially considering the way you guys opened last year when you got Yeah, and I, and I would say that, um, you know, uh, West Texas last year is a pretty good team, but our inexperience on defense showed up the first game, and I'm hoping when I go back on tape there will probably be some mistakes, but the number of returners we had on defense – I'm hoping that's the reason why it is. You know, we uh, I'd say the one guy that probably struggled in the first half was one of our first-time starters, Charles Hill. He made a couple mistakes that led to some things that happened. And so uh, a couple of our guys, the, the first time they had to play out there, you know, you could tell it was the first time out in the football field, a couple guys. But I thought one guy that didn't really show was his first time on the football field was Charles Johnson. I thought Charles Johnson played well out there. And I'm sure some things on tape, but he, he played like a guy that's played Grand Valley football before, and so that was good. But the guys that have played, they played well. The guys that hadn't played, there's be some mistakes, and we cleaned up, and that's part of the growth process. Danny, how'd you feel uh, out there, I guess, uh, back out there on the field? Uh, I feel really good, you know, getting that first game under my belt. Um, just brings a lot of confidence to me personally, just knowing that I got through the game. There's, I got put in some awkward situations, and, uh, you know, I came out of it all right. So uh, that's really good. Uh, just personally with the confidence. Um, I'm out of shape. I gotta work on that and then I'm gonna spend the next you know nine days working on that, making sure that ain't you know as bad for Hillsdale. Probably gonna be out of shape again, but I'm gonna work on it and uh, it's a process, you know. 
Um, defensively, though, um, you know, I'm just really proud of the guys. Um, you know, I was just amazed how how deep we are, and uh, I mean, you know, just the D line, how how much penetration we got. You know, I just I was just seeing guys like Ryan Pettis and being just flying all over the place. You know, I'm I'm you know I'm getting killed out there by a tackle, and I just see Ryan Pettis just making the play. It just feels really good knowing that. We got four solid D linemen out there, and you know, even when I'm out and any other people, we got we got Dez, we got Ricky Thomas. We're just we're so deep, and it feels it just it's a great feeling. What was it like uh, getting to go out there again with 15,000? You know, second largest crowd in Lover Stadium history. It's... Uh, it just feels good to be back on the field again. It's been a long time coming. Um, it just it's really happy. You know, that's all I wanted is uh, you know this this past year, all I wanted was at least one more game at Lover Stadium, and now I got it. Time to move on. Time to. Um, become the old Danny Richard and start flying around. I, I didn't think I was flying around as what I've been known to, so I'll fix it. Heath, how did you uh, feel running out there on the field uh, for a first time as starter and then seeing 15,000 people out there? Yeah, it was definitely a good time. Made a, took way too many mistakes, so uh, offensively, all together, starting with myself, you know, misreading coverages, uh, underthrowing balls. You know, and we can't turn the ball over in the red zone. We can't uh, have stupid penalties. So, I mean, we're lucky the defense bailed us out a little bit because uh, we made a lot of mistakes for sure. But it was fun being out there in front of uh, 15,000 plus, whatever you said. Did you uh, did you start feeling comfortable, though, as, as kind of the, the game wore on? It seemed like the second half you were you just seemed Yeah, I got settled in a little bit there in, you know, second end of the second quarter, start of the second half. But still, I mean, there was a couple balls there in the first quarter, or early second, that I should make. I, I make those make those all the time so I'm a little disappointed with myself I you know I know it's the first game but I still expect to uh, expect a lot more uh, better than that how do, how, uh, nice having Charles out there as another option I mean you know we are you know everybody knows that you're gonna get out of Javon and yeah and Greg and, and some of those other guys but yeah he's big and he's fast and he's he always seems to be open because he runs he runs good routes uh, he knows he's smart he, he can read coverages I mean he's, he's doing what he's coached and that's uh, really important yeah he had a great game tonight he was a like Coach said, one of the one of the one bright spots for definitely for these uh, new guys out here. So, yeah, I thought he played well. Coach, were you happy with uh, kind of how the, the, the subs kind of came in there outside of maybe that? Uh, yeah, I think two things you know that these guys mentioned on our depth at D line helped us a ton. Um, if that would have been last year, given um, the pace that Western Oregon was going and the you know the heat and humidity, uh, I don't know if we would have got that production. We were rotating in seven, eight guys. Uh, and so really critical, I spent this first game, and part of the reason we played well defensively is the depth in our defense. And then, um, you know, I, I thought actually our twos on defense went out there and got some stops and did some things against their ones. They kept their starting um, defense in, and, you know, they were, um, you know, they were throwing blitzes and stuff at us and doing things, and I thought Isaiah didn't do too bad. You know, we had uh, a couple backup running backs in there kind of plugging away and do some things. So... You know, uh, there'll be some things on tape that with the second group that's going to be ugly, but it, it's nice to get those guys out on the field and get them experience, and it's also nice to get some of our guys, especially our offensive and defensive linemen, kind of off the field. Um, he, as he talked about, you got more comfortable as the game went on, and you felt, it looked like you really felt comfortable with the play action pass. The first mm -hmm. touchdown was that. There's a couple more plays. How is the success that the running backs can have help you, you know? Again? Yeah, definitely the run sets up the pass. It's, it's no doubt. I, I felt a lot more comfortable when I, you know, I was I was locked into one target. I know where I was going. On the plays, on the on the passes where I had to make some reads, you know, make some judgment calls. Yeah, I was rusty, like I said earlier. So I mean, but definitely the success of you know that Norman and Hershey and obviously our, our I thought our line played really well tonight. Uh, those guys up front, Jim Hardy, Ian Evans, I thought played well. Uh, Tim Melito, Andrew Beta Bender, and uh, Tyler Moran getting his first start there on the line. I thought they all played pretty well. So. The success of our O line and our running backs, Hershey and Norman, really, really set up set up things for me and opened up uh, opened up some things in the past game. And then, coach, um, the run defense was up and down. There was some times in the first half where it has the second half it got a lot better. Though, <clears throat> how do you work on that to improve for next week against Hillsdale? Uh, you know, a couple times uh, I would say they're in a lot of like four wide receivers and. Um, Based on the score, uh, we were making some calls. I should I, I should say I was making some calls that were probably um, more geared towards some past stuff. And so a couple of those runs I don't know necessarily are on the kids, maybe on some calls we made because we're trying to – I just knew when it was 23 nothing. I knew that the way they are going to get in this game was uh, some type of big chunk play. 
And so probably got a little less aggressive with some of the calls because I didn't want to give up a big touchdown and give them momentum. So that had to do part of it, and I'm sure there's part of it where we had some guys that uh, maybe were a little bit out of position here and there with a couple of those runs that they had in the second half. But, um, you know, still we held our opponent under 100 yards rushing, and I know there's some sack totals and, and TFLs thrown on it, but that's part of the part of the statistics too. So you hold somebody under 100 yards rushing, you've got a, a pretty decent chance to win. The other thing I said in submission my press conference, Kern Gay was out with a hamstring. That's our leading receiver coming back, our senior all-conference player. So uh, I thought our offense not having one of our key key guys out there, he tweaked a hamstring, and it could have been maybe gone, but we decided to make a decision as a staff to uh, play it safe so we could have him for full speed next week and sales W did not push it. So I, I give the receiving core two credit for that because. We were, we were short our, our leading receiver from last year. And then Danny, um, kind of bouncing up, I just said, you know, the run, defense was good at times, and it was inconsistent at others, but it was still a good effort overall. What can you, as, you guys in the line do to, you know, stop the run as well as you pressure the quarterback today? Um, uh, you know, we, we got to watch the tape first, see what, kind of what we did wrong and stuff, but, uh, you know, we got to get more uh, penetration on the run. Make sure we're staying in our gaps and just flying like uh, you know Grand Valley defense is known for. So, um, you know, I thought I thought on the run defense we did really well, um, especially with first down. I thought we we had a significant amount of TFLs, especially on first down, and that, that sets them up for a second and long. Um, so I, I I would say defensively, I'm pretty I was pretty impressed uh, with the front seven and you know the whole defense uh, stopping the run today.